Okay, let's move on to the first slide, which looks at blending PRINZ2 and Agile together. The first thing to recognise is that PRINZ2 and Agile each have their own strengths and are each focused on slightly different areas of the project. So we need to understand when and where each of them should be used. And as you can see from the diagram, sometimes referred to as the cake or the layer cake, you can see the three management levels that we're used to within PRINCE2. At the bottom level, product delivery, in the middle, project management, and at the top, project direction. And of course, above that, you would have corporate and program management. And as shown on the diagram, PRINCE2 fits very well into the top two layers of project direction and project management, which is not a surprise since it's a project management methodology. With regard to product delivery, PRINCE2 does cover product, product delivery, obviously, in managing product delivery process. But it's not really explicit in how you manage product delivery and how product delivery should be achieved. Agile, as shown on the diagram, fits in that layer much better and provides much more guidance with methodologies such as Scrum in terms of how you should deliver products. Okay, so we've said that Prince 2 really focus on the top two layers. Agile fits better on the bottom layer. Now we can't use Prince 2 and Agile in isolation of each other on the project. We need to blend them. And as the diagram shows, we need Agile thinking rising up and Prince 2 thinking cascading down to give a, a blending, particularly in the boundary between the project management and the project and the product delivery. We can't use PRINCE2 and Agile in isolation and simply say we use PRINCE2 for directing a project, managing a project and Agile for product delivery. We need to blend them. We need Agile thinking to rise up and we need PRINCE2 thinking to cascade down, particularly in the boundary between project management and product delivery. So as I said before, we might, from the work breakdown structure, we produce product descriptions for all the products we need to form the project product. Those pr product descriptions form the backlog, the Scrum product backlog. Within a management stage, we may have one or more technical stages, as you know. Those technical stages may contain one or more scrums, depending on the size of project. So a Prince 2 project manager in an agile environment needs to be comfortable with managing product delivery through, through a scrum, if, if you're using scrum as your agile delivery method. On a traditional PRINCE2 project, the project manager would give work packages to the delivery team and ask them to deliver them by a set date. In a PRINCE2 Agile environment, the project manager would create the product backlog. And then for a given management stage, they might create a subset of the product backlog as the product backlog for that management stage. The management stage could then be broken down into a number of technical stages. The technical stages could just be sprints or each technical stage might consist of several sprints. And the project manager would work with the development team to define the sprint backlog for each sprint. And using the principles of Scrum and Kanban, the project manager and the development team could evaluate the success of delivery of each sprint to enable them to better forecast what would be delivered by future sprints. So it's a, it's a more agile 
way of working. It's a more flexible way of working within the management stage. But it does enable the project manager to retain control of the development, particularly by prioritising. I personally would suggest, if you're using Scrum, that the product owner should be the project manager. The project manager, after all, interfaces with the stakeholders, um, the senior user, senior supplier and the executive. So the people who are representing the business and the project manager can funnel all that information down into one person. Now it depends on the size of the project. Clearly, you might have sub project managers, you might have several scrum teams. My personal view as a project manager is my starting point would be I as project manager will be the scrum product owner. Now, depending on size of project, that might need to be modified. But it's my responsibility as project manager to interface with the project board who represent the senior user, senior supplier, the executive who re represent the business. I interact with the stakeholders. I manage the stakeholders. I'm responsible for understanding the requirements and ensuring the project delivers against those requirements. And really, the Scrum product owner is providing that into the Scrum. So I would start from the point of view of the principal project manager being the product owner for Scrum. In terms of agile thinking rising up, one of the obvious things is the transparency. One of the key principles of PRINCE2 is managed by exception. And as you know, you as project manager delegate responsibility for delivery to the delivery team with intolerances. And the delivery team need to raise an exception to you if they think they're going to breach a tolerance. In an agile environment, if you're using Kanban, that can help communicate progress and potential breaches of tolerance early. The transparency of Agile is particularly useful for upward communication. And that's one of the elements of Agile thinking that can rise up in a Prince2 project. So as you can see, I've just given you two examples of how Prince2 thinking can move down, how Agile thinking can move up. But that's what we need to be looking for, a blend of Prince2, of using the best of both worlds to achieve the best result for our project. What does Prince2 Agile comprise of? Well, as you can see on the diagram to my left, at its core is Prince2, all of Prince2, all four key elements, the Prince2 principles, the Prince2 themes, the Prince2 processes, and tailoring Prince2 to the project environment. Around the edge, we've added Agile behaviors, Agile frameworks, Agile concepts, and Agile techniques. And a fifth element, the Agile focus areas, which are perhaps the most unique part of Prince2 Agile, in the sense that we've taken Prince2, we've taken Agile, we've put them together. You'll be comfortable and familiar with all those elements. The five focus areas are perhaps the newest part, the most value add from Prince2 Agile. This next slide has eight guidance points with regard to Prince2 Agile. Now, you may disagree with some of the points on this slide, but the fact is these eight points are what Prince2 Agile was based on. So from a Prince2 Agile point of view, and certainly from the Prince2 Agile Practitioner Examination point of view, these eight points are fact. So let's go through them one at a time. The first point is that Prince2 2009 version, the latest version, is already enabled for use with Agile. And that's, of all the eight points, is the most important point to recognise. 
and it's really fundamental to Prince to Agile because, as I said on the last slide, Prince to Agile contains all of Prince to. Nothing has been taken away. And clearly, if you think about it, one of the Prince to principles is tailored to the project environment, and one of the key elements is tailoring Prince to to the project environment. So if the project environment is Agile, you're tailoring to Agile. So Prince 2 is already Agile enabled. It's important to recognize that though, because some people feel that Prince 2 is bureaucratic or Prince 2 can only be used in a waterfall environment. And as we know, as experienced Prince 2 practitioners, that's not correct. So this is just re-emphasizing that point. The second point, Prince2 is suitable for any style of project and is not a traditional project management approach as is typically contrasted to Agile. And that's really re-emphasizing the first point, which is to say Prince2 is absolutely not tied to a waterfall approach or any other development approach. It can work with any development approach you care to use. Prince2 is really just focused on the management of the project, of ensuring the project's being controlled and delivering business benefits. Okay. Point three, Prince2 Agile is for any project, not just IT projects. Now, as we saw on an earlier slide with the Agile Manifesto, which mentions software, many of the Agile behaviors, elements, techniques, tools were created by software developers who have come out of software development. But that doesn't mean they can't be applied to other projects. And certainly a big effort has been made with Prince2 Agile to ensure that it's applicable to all types of projects, not just IT projects. Point four, IT only frameworks and techniques are mentioned in Prince2 Agile, but not extensively. Point five, there is much more to Agile than Scrum framework. Agile is not Scrum. So we do mention Scrum, I'll mention Scrum on the course. It's a popular method, but it's not all of Agile. Point six, the most commonly used Agile approaches are Scrum and Kanban, but they are not suitable for managing a project in isolation. However, they can be effectively used in a project context. So that really refers back to the cake diagram. Scrum and Kanban are very popular and very useful at the product delivery level. But for managing a project and directing a project, then we need a project management methodology such as Prince2. Point seven, the term agile in the manual refers to a family of behaviors, concepts, frameworks, and techniques. So it doesn't just refer to Scrum or Kanban or a particular method. It refers to a whole range of behaviours, concepts, frameworks and techniques. Point eight, using Agile on a project is not a question of yes or no. It's a question of how much. And we'll cover that in more detail when we talk about the agile meter. Before we move on, I should address a common misconception that Agile can't be used in complex environments or that Agile environments are intrinsically uncontrolled or ungovernable. Prince2 Agile firmly believes that control and governance allows Agile to be used in complex environments. An analogy might be the Eurofighter Typhoon. It's an extremely Agile aircraft, far more Agile than say an A380, but the governance and control on the Eurofighter Typhoon is far greater than an A380. It needs that governance and control because of its agility. And really that's what Prince2 Agile seeks to provide, the governance and control to enable Agile to be used effectively and efficiently in a controlled way 
to deliver the business benefits. And whether you're using Agile or Prince2 or Prince2 Agile or any other methodologies, what it comes down to, project delivery comes down to delivering business benefits. Before we stop and have some recap questions, I'll just mention the Prince2 journey. So the Prince2 journey is mentioned in the Prince2 manual and it's really the journey from pre-project to delivery to the final delivery stages and closing a project. And over the rest of the course, we'll be looking at how that Prince2 journey might look in an agile context. I'd just like to make the point now that what we'll be looking at is our way and not the way. So as with Prince2, and of course Prince2 Agile is the same because it includes all of Prince2, tailoring Prince2 to the project's environment is very important. So tailoring Prince2 to your Agile project environment is just as important and only you as project manager can make the decisions as, ha as to how best to tailor Prince2 to, to your environment. The manual and this course simply provide guidance as to how you might tailor Prince2, but there is no right, there is no wrong. It's your decision, you have to do what you think is best for your project environment. And as the slide says, it depends on the project context. It may affect the level of formality, where the emphasis is, in, is placed, how it is carried out.